Oh my goodness, we had an incredible NFL draft. 43 trades took place, the most in NFL history, and there's a lot of fantasy fallout. You do not want to miss it. Today we're covering the NFC winners and losers, checking in on Jason and B. John Robinson's destination and a whole lot more. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us some comments. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday. May 2nd. What a great day. We're through the draft, and it is Jason's birthday today. It is. And I... Uh, 52. 52 years if you, young. If you say an age that is way older, and you know you're lying about it drastically, you feel, you feel much better you about it. You feel younger. I feel so much younger. Somebody out there believed you. Ooh, that's sad. <laughs> <laughs> Can, um, I, can I pull off 52? Goodness gracious. Um, No, no. You look uh, not a day over 50. Thank you. Oh, like in a, you, could, you could play 52 you could in a movie. You could definitely pull off 52 yeah. if you did some. Thanks, guys. Not did, much. If you did not some much. like uh, you gray the beard up a little bit yeah. and maybe you need more wrinkles. Oh, I've, uh, they're wrinkly. coming. Don't worry. <laughs> Give me a week or two. Uh, welcome into the show. NFL draft reactions today. We're going through the NFC winners and losers today, the AFC winners and losers on Thursday. I imagine you got an early birthday gift with the home of B. John Robinson in the draft, although... Mm -hmm. then, then your birthday gifts were taken away from you and me. <laughs> yeah, I, and we'll get into all of that today. That was uh, Zach Charbonnet reaction. Um, I was... Pretty disappointed in your video reaction to the pick, it, which makes me wonder if in like if I was examining the video and, and and not everybody may have seen it. It's on our Twitter. We just recorded when the the Falcons were on the clock and Jason's reaction. Um, if I am examining that with a critical you know eye, mm -hmm. I think you were disappointed. I think that mm. I think that you 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 did what you think you should have done. You clapped and you said yay. You didn't stand. I've seen you stand. I've seen you pump your fist. I've seen you react with I think you got what you thought was going to happen and you were disappointed that you didn't get something even better. So, you're right and you're wrong. Um you're right in the sense that I was I was a little disappointed, but what I was disappointed in was not the landing spot, was not something bad for Bijan. It was that it took away all of the drama that we could have so had. Fast. It was just it was it was over right away. It was the first opportunity I could feel that, that. Bijan could have gone, and I was looking forward to the emotional hardship of oh no, as were we. I just wanted it to end well, but then it started just too perfect, and it was like okay, all right, we're here. But total landing spot phenomenal couldn't be much better you're talking about ex incredible draft capital going to a team that wants to uh run the ball to the to the toilet um that's the direct what does quote that yep. mean? the direct yep. quote Wait, that's a from, quote kind of that's a jason moore quote that's that's how i are you are you saying that that has been said before i'm saying that what on head, earth does that even mean head coach arthur smith was quoted as saying I want to run the piss out of the ball. Oh, okay. oh so this is that's okay. who that's who he is. Okay, and so he got his guy. I didn't know there was urine in the ball, but <laughs> look, that's not my. Quote. Thought this was a Steve Ballmer <laughs> celebrating his toilet situation. <laughs> not my quote, but um, you said you had the script, though, didn't uh, you say that when 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 you were projecting Bijan Robinson? Uh, yes, yeah, so I did know, and okay. I oh, did that's get that why correct. the reaction wasn't yeah. so because it was you know spoiler. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. We did have an incredible ultimate draft week. Thank you to everybody that's participated. Uh, the ultimate draft kit, the UDK plus, the rookie rankings post draft. Mm. Um, those are done. Those are done. The new uh, <laughs> updated rankings are 
going to be live. The super flex rankings for dynasty startups, uh, for the rookie rankings, those will be live this week. Brand all, new. All of our, yeah, we, we haven't had those in the past. People have asked for them, and we're men of the people. So those will be going live uh, this week for the uh, UDK+. Plus. And uh, that's all at ultimatedraftkit.com. Part of this week was uh, some exclusive giveaway items, which we'll get to right now. A signed Jalen Waddle jersey. Uh, who does this go to, Al? Do we have a <laughs> you who, who the winner? Uh, Scott Iote. Scott, congratulations. That that was 100%. I don't want to read this last name. <laughs> that was, let me make the producer have to, have to butcher you, it. You bailed out, man. That, that's Scott Ayote. Ayote. DK Metcalf. Ayote. Ayote. All right, go that's on. That's a fun one. Um, DK Metcalf signed jersey goes to Devin Jones. Well, that's not very fun. Got that one. Congratulations, but... <laughs> Devin and then Jones. our grand prize, oh. the Listener League spot, Jacob Levy. Come on down. Maybe Levi. I think it's Levy. Probably Levy. Yeah. I'll go with that, too. Uh, welcome to the Listener League, Jacob. It will be our pleasure to destroy you. And um, you've all been emailed, the winners. And congratulations. We'll do some more fun giveaways over the course of the summer. We are into May, which means... We're into what? The ultimate draft kit is one oh, man. month Producers away. asleep at the wheel. No, you can't use that drop in May. Yes, you can. Thank you. Um, Thank with, you for I'm having actually, some integrity. I am actually with the producers on this. I love the drop, but it's May. You can't Thank say it's going to be May. Okay. Now, Mike right. did open up like his Twitter account today with... Another Timberlake gift. No. It is the dumbest last joke. <laughs> oh, last night? Yeah, okay. yeah. counts. Um, was Mike not here for the episode where Al did let that drop sit for about 30 minutes? No, oh. I was I was not here. Oh, It, it was, was egregious. Worst. I believe his excuse was I was tweeting. Yeah, he was like, <laughs> his excuse was, I live sorry, on the I, show. I'm on my phone. He said something like, I'm on <laughs> Twitter. Yeah, well, I was, yes, I was re reacting to the Aaron Rodgers trade on Twitter, <laughs> yeah. and, and my excuse was honesty, because that's all I had. No, I mean, <laughs> but and, and all on. we have is the right to make fun of it. So we're, we were in the midst of recording, Oh yeah, and our producer's yeah. like, hold on, I gotta go drop a sick tweet. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, I, I get it, Aaron Rodgers news, that's big for, for uh, the Jordan Love truthers out there, like Al. Yeah. But um, there's nothing I enjoy more than taking advantage of. The weak moments of our producers. Because yeah, right. there's so few and far between. They're such studs. So we got to take advantage. Um, what else do we got going on? I think it's time to get into the news. Let's do it. News and notes from around the league. It's Deucer's Alley because occasionally we do drop <laughs> a big one on one of those guys. <laughs> How you doing today, Brooksy? Doing great, yeah. Right. And we know it's it's part of the job. You tweeting? Part of being <laughs> not right now. <laughs> all right, all right. Kyle's in the building as well. I'm making trades back here. Are I'm, you? I'm doing my job. Dynasty, maybe. Ooh. My league, the league we're in together. We're working on some. Or stuff. the one you keep losing. It. Interesting. Stop. Okay. Uh, NFL news. Lamar Jackson. Congratulations, we did it. Get the bag. Five year, two hundred sixty million dollar deal, one hundred eighty five guaranteed. Congratulations. Ravens so, get their guy. Congratulations to the Ravens. I think their offense is going to be awesome. Congrats to Mark Andrews. Congrats to Mark Andrews. Congrats to Zay Flowers having Lamar Jackson there. And congrats to the NFL owners who now can put to bed the giant fully yep. guaranteed contract because now that both Hertz and Lamar Jackson have done the normal awesome contract, they you know, they can't Continue holding over uh, the Browns' mistake on the rest of the league. Yes, congratulations, billionaires. Right, right, <laughs> yes, yes. And then the Cardinals. <laughs> the Cardinals actually had a good draft. Yeah, However, it didn't start well. Tucked away in the news, five minutes before the NFL draft started, the Cardinals uh, get get to the point of a settlement on a tampering dispute and just throw their third-round pick. Uh, over to the Eagles, who threw theirs back. I mean, it's a thirty, almost a thirty pick difference, and um, there you go. The Cardinals began the draft by losing a, a pick, and the Eagles, of course, 
Yeah. And, did well. And that was for tampering uh, with – Head coach Jonathan Gannon. Well, yeah. not at the time. Because, right, right, right. At that point, it was the a phone defensive call. coordinator. Yeah, a phone call after the NFC title game by brand new general manager making his mark, Monty Austin Fort. Um, speaking of the Eagles, there were 43 trades during the NFL draft weekend. That was a record. Goodness gracious. Um, which is, I try to hit 43 in our league every year. That's the, my my baseline. You usually do. DeAndre Swift was traded from the Lions to the Eagles. It was a fourth-round pick in 2025 and a seventh-round pick swap this year. It is currently 2023 for those <laughs> following along at home. So this pick will um, not cost them much uh, for a long time. Either DeAndre Swift is um, bad and okay, they gave up uh, a fifth, or he's good, and they gave up very little, but then he will sign somewhere, and uh, they'll get a compensatory pick back the same year they give up this pick. It is another brilliant move by one of the best-managed teams in the NFL. It, it will be very interesting to talk about the Eagles' backfield moving forward, though. Yeah. Because you have two players that have been known more for their injuries than their on-field success so far in DeAndre Swift and uh, Rashad, Rashad Penny. Penny. And then you also have talent beyond them in the backfield room. So I, I, I'll be interested. Like, is this the, this is not the time to talk about Swift's? No, this is the time to talk okay. about Swift's fantasy value. So I think let, it's important. Um, it's going to be extremely overblown, in my opinion. It usually is. The DeAndre Swift truthers will never die. Um, I think it will be a mistake. DeAndre Swift goes to a role. Uh, that is obviously a, a great offensive line. Miles Sanders just had a big fantasy year, and you have hope that uh, this Philly native coming home is going to be awesome for such a good offense. I don't see it that way. I see this as a four-back rotation. You've got DeAndre Swift. You've got Rashad Penny. Obviously, Kenneth Gainwell and Boston Scott, they've been involved even when Miles Sanders was there. So this is not going to be... DeAndre Swift is now the dude who's going to be a workhorse back for a great offense. I think this will be a lot of running backs involved, and that's just if they stay healthy. I completely agree, and I thought this would be a point of maybe disagreement here on the show, but people have asked, what do you do with Swift right now in Dynasty after the trade? I say you trade him on the promise of DeAndre Swift joining yes. the Eagles because you think about this offensive makeup, the touchdowns, are not going to be easy to come by for DeAndre Swift with a multi-back rotation, Jalen Hurts on the goal line, and those wide receivers. To me, it's home run plays are the weeks that DeAndre Swift will have value. But beyond that, it may be very difficult to predict. And look, the, just to convert that into a, a Lions discussion, I mean, they obviously gave him away for basically nothing. Um, the essence of what the Lions did in this draft was move a first-rounder and DeAndre Swift to get back Jameer Gibbs in a fourth in 2025. That was the real essence of their move. Now, I, it, it's a big bet by Detroit on a different player in Jameer Gibbs, who I think is very, very good. But it will be very interesting for, I think, Lions fans to watch this because we've been down this road with a lot of running backs in Detroit. That's why Jason was not exactly thrilled with the idea of Bijan just landing there. Yeah, it is ironic that um, one of the worst, in fact, the worst landing spot to me in the draft for Bijan was the Detroit Lions. That would have been uh, catastrophic for his fantasy value. He goes into a timeshare. He's going to the most cursed uh, backfield for running backs literally of all time. Uh, Barry Sanders is still haunting them. We're back I, to the ghosts. I, yeah, look, only there, only in Detroit, yada, yada, but it's actually a good landing spot for Gibbs because it comes with draft capital that was not expected. Right. When you when you spend the capital that they did, which basically, like you said, Andy, was a first and swift, uh, essentially, for a 2025 uh, fourth and Gibbs, you are, you are committing to your team. And that's another, on the swift side, that is another thing to keep in mind. The, we, we talk about the, they're not giving up much the the compensation for swift isn't a ton which means the investment isn't a ton they're yeah, not yeah. they aren't saying you're our dude they're saying we can make a really smart transaction to just add another body here 
2010 first round pick Javed Best, 2015, 18, and 2020, they went second round. Amir Abdullah, Kerryon Johnson, DeAndre Swift. And here we are, 12th overall pick for Jameer Gibbs. And I'm back in, baby. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they, I'm in. There's, there's great potential there, but um, it, it, it was a lot to give up. Adam Troutman traded. <laughs> yeah, let's go, this baby. This is being reported exclusively for Mike. Thank you. The Broncos acquired uh, Adam Troutman in a seventh for a sixth. That's right. Big, big time investment. Uh, this, uh, I think this is just Use slightly interesting. No, news? no, it's not useless news because he goes back to the coach that drafted him. And Greg, well, one, one, one hand up for useless news. Anybody with okay. me? Uh, two hands okay. up for useless news. Well, are you, are you fully in on Greg Dulcich? Yes. No. More than Troutman, yeah. Well, sure, no, no. definitely more than Troutman. What do you mean fully in on? I mean, like, well, like into the – before this happened, it was like Greg Dulcich is looking like he is in a very good situation. He had – This does not impact my view on Dulcich. Oh, it, it impacts it to me as uh, he's back with the coach that drafted him with high draft capital and a bunch of uh, uh, extra picks to trade up to go get him. Adam Troutman requested the trade specifically because he wanted to be a pass catcher. Now, that doesn't mean that the Broncos will acquiesce and be like, yeah, you said you want to be a pass catcher, come be a pass catcher for us. But I think that it is a it is a hindrance to the, the clear path for Greg Dulcich to have a breakout season. I'm just happy that, there's, that the NFL has given you an opportunity to be back in on Adam Troutman. I didn't say I was back in. Oh, that's what I heard. There's your too many guy. words out of your mouth Look, for you not to be back in. You Dulcich can't be is, back in when you're never out, guys. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's fair. That's that's the truth. Greg Dulcich is such a superior athlete, so he will be fine. That is my opinion on the matter. Okay. Adam Troutman was thwarted repeatedly by everybody uh, on that Saints offense because, look, reps are earned. Opportunities are earned. Juwan Johnson earned them over Troutman, and Dulcich will do the same, in my opinion. Bills signed Latavius Murray to a one-year contract. <laughs> so the backfield okay. continues to uh, – He's he's on my dynasty roster, and I was looking – He will get you. He will get in there. You this, know what's yeah. happening. Oh, yeah. This is the time of the year where you've got to drop, you know, three, four, five players to let your rookies onto your roster, and I just assumed he was one of my auto cuts. That I wake up, I'm like, what are you doing? How are you still signing contracts? Jerry Judy, Brandon Ayuk, fifth-year options picked up for both of them. And um, after basically, well, 4 p.m. yesterday, teams can sign veteran free agents. We're recording this show a day early, uh, so some of these guys might already get picked up. But uh, there are free agents out there, and there are, there are teams in the draft that didn't do things at running back that surprised, I think, a lot of people. And it, it might be because they Zeke – or a Fournette, or a Gordon, or Hunt, or some of these other running backs out there are going to be their additions. And then um, other wide receivers out there, Julio, Cobb, Landry, Galladay. <laughs> yeah, we did no. not need to mention those names. Yeah, no. Um, all right, any other news that we need to cover? No, sir. Nope. Hey, rookie. Welcome to the NFL. NFC winners and losers. Well, we, let's, we were let's all start. kind of losers here. Let's, well, one, one of us more than the rest. Um, let's start I'm with not our even embarrassed with, uh, with our results <laughs> from our predictions episode, where Mike and I tied for first, doubling the correct yes. amount of predictions. Yes, we over did. Andy oh, Holloway. Yeah. Oh so, no, no great detail, job. No you, details there. Great huh? work, Mike. I gave details. Oh, we doubled. Plenty. Your amount of picks. Well, let's put it. Uh, all I'll say is that I got one right. Yeah. Well, there you go. Um, Embarrassing. <clears throat> Shame upon your house. The Dynasty Pass has full rankings, production profiles, rookie mock draft, risers, fallers, all the updates heading your way. Uh, this was statistically the least predictable draft as far as like the the people that uh, track the mock drafts and all of that. This one was a wild one. Yeah. All right. Let's start in the NFC South with the Carolina Panthers. They take Bryce Young, number one overall. And then maybe uh, the biggest wide receiver surprise in the draft was Jonathan Mingo, who had been shooting up draft boards, taken in the second round, number 39 overall, 6'2", 220, and really could be their number one. I yes. mean, he could be their, their top guy. 
Uh, Adam Thielen, DJ Chark, Terrace Marshall. The competition is not stiff. No, it, it's Mingo. Mingo will end up as the number one. It might take wide some receiver. time, though. I'll say, like, it might not be week one of the season, but sure. I think he could start. But he's his athleticism is fantastic. You you rattle off six two two twenty in a draft where everyone like the majority of the wide receivers were little bitty baby guys of like one eighty and under, which is that's tiny for for the NFL to get a guy who's 6'2", 220 to to grow with your overall number one pick. I I love this pick and I think that Jonathan Mingo is I I think he will be not elite. I'm not calling for that, but I think he's going to be a very very good fantasy player and I think that he is worth a late first round uh dynasty rookie pick. Yeah, I think that's where he'll he'll be landing is is right on that one two turn in rookie startups in in non superflex uh, leagues, but if you just think about how the starting rotation will go, you assume Adam Thielen will be in the slot, and so then it's basically DJ Chark, Mingo, and Terrace Marshall fighting for two outside roles, and Terrace Marshall ain't never won a thing in his NFL life for a minute. You I think mean, the Mingo will eat his baby? I, uh, <laughs> yes. A Mingo? Yes. Hey, so that's the what Mingo you're baby. I love right. it. A Mingo will eat Terrace Marshall's I baby. <laughs> I was going to jackknife it in there no matter what because there's not a lot of mingos that have come through the nfl in the last eight nine years uh 28 percent of the targets are vacated but again there's a rookie quarterback um you're not going to get over four thousand yards uh you're gonna have a team that had such success running the football i mean their whole offense is rebuilt i mean they have a, a new running back they have new wide receivers new quarterback this is a uh, new tight end um Brand new offense. So I, I, I think Mingo has every chance to be the number one in, in what I would say would be a bottom half passing offense. Yeah, that that is fair. It's also worth noting they did oh, not yeah, add. Bar Barkevious. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. M-I-N-G-O. Yeah. <laughs> and Mingo was his name of? Yes. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's Great. worth noting with their draft picks, they did not add a running back. Yes, it is It notable. is Miles Sanders, uh, full steam ahead. I, I really do believe he's going to have an – uh, a, a huge workload, including uh, passing work this season. So from a fantasy loser perspective, uh, that's Terrace Marshall's opportunity. I mean, dude, I I mistakenly <laughs> traded a second last year when it looked like hey, his, he took the shot. His opportunity, and then this offseason came. Oh, they trade DJ Moore. It looks like, man, he's finally going to have his opportunity. And then they're – you it's not, what they have done – It doesn't ever happen. What like they've that. done is show you exactly what they think of Terrace Marshall. Because they said the right things. Oh, he's got a great opportunity. And then they go and they sign Adam Thielen and they sign DJ Chark and they draft Mingo. They don't believe in Terrace Marshall. It, but, it, you know, Mike's brought this up before. Like, if you don't do it early, you don't do it very yep. often. I mean, it, it's very rare to have a Devontae Parker storyline. That's why it's called a Devontae Parker storyline. Most of the time, if you don't do it early, yep. it doesn't get done. And and the team moves on. The team knows, you know, there's a lot. I mean, De the DeAndre Swift situation is one where, like, look, we're fantasy players. We watch him play. We think he's good. It was obvious, like, at the end of last, not this past season, but the season before, that, you know, th this team just wasn't in <laughs> on DeAndre Swift. There are things behind the scenes, um, confidence levels. I, you know, Terrace Marshall's done. Yeah. It's the Bijan Minute. Yeah. Bijan Robinson to the Falcons. Let's talk about the Falcons. We had uh, the expected draft pick, Bijan Robinson out of Texas at eight overall, running back in the top 10 of the NFL draft. Really nothing that he cannot do. Uh, he's, a, he's a monster. It was strange in a way because, look, he's a much better player than any back that they had, but they were number one in almost every rushing metric last year. Tyler Algier, 4.9 yards per carry as a rookie, over 1,000 yards. Broke the rookie record. Broke the rookie record. Um, and he did. But this team is uh, this team is moving forward with Bijan Robinson. Yeah, and they just had a lot of needs. Like I, I ran into a Falcons fan uh, at a store this past weekend. He was swagged out, so I quickly asked him his opinion of the of the trade and his his thoughts. And Kyle, I know you're a Falcons fan, so I don't know if you share them, but it's like the Falcons keep trying to fix problems with offense, is what he said. It's always adding offensive pieces. It's not addressing the defense. 
they added another one when they do have holes. I mean, do you – are you just like already got the jersey on the way? Oh, I got the jersey for the kids. But, yes, uh -huh. for building a team, this isn't the right, right move, but Algiers set the Atlanta rookie record. Yes. And fifth round draft capital says – who cares? That's, yeah, what, that's it, what they said. Well, you had him. You all, you had Caleb Huntley ripping off 4.8 yards per attempt. And when your wide receiver depth chart is loaded with Drake London, I mean, first-round pick, mm -hmm. just, just, then you got Mac Hollins. Oh, oh, you, got, you got Scotty Miller. Woo! Scotty. I mean, like your backups are like Frank Darby, Kaderil Hodge. When you, do, when you have that as your you flexibility, when your wide, yeah, yeah, you have the luxury pick. Take the running back, make sure that the, the, the now who holds the rookie record for your uh, most yards from a running back, get him out of here. Get him out of here. Replace him with a better player. Yeah, That's well, how you win in the NFL. Ty well, well Tyler said. Algier Stan speaking up. <laughs> well said, Mike. No, uh, so uh, stupid. Lions so fans, stupid. Lions fans are really upset with us for calling their, their pick at number 12 of Gibbs stupid, which it totally is. So is the Falcons. The, what a dummy, dumb, dumb pick. I mean, just awful. I love it. I wanted it. I rooted for it. This is fantastic for fantasy because football. Because you don't play real football. Exactly. And, and I'm not a Falcons fan. But if I was a Falcons <laughs> fan, I'd be like, what are you doing? Uh, Warren Sharp put them on blast. Uh, a, a great Twitter follow. This is, this is what he pointed out from last year. He said they were number one in rushing yards number one in yards per carry, number one in rushing first downs, number two in EPA per rush, number three in success rate, number three in first downs or touchdowns per rush. They were really good at running the ball, which is why, I mean, you take all that, the scheme that, that came over from Tennessee with Derrick Henry, you put Bijan in there, whoo, baby, for fantasy football, this is fantastic. The only, the only true problem that I can see here is it's the – offense being able to move the football enough. You you saw Derrick Henry in the Tennessee offense with Ryan Tannehill who could function handing the ball off. That was successful. Desmond Ritter, He's QBR of 36, QBR of 51, QBR of 36. If you – look, Malik Willis also ran the Tennessee offense last year for a couple of games. That wasn't the best time in the world for Derrick Henry. So I would love Bijan to have goal line opportunities. Um, I think the offense with – Desmond Ritter are going to have ups and downs. You're going to have games where they score nine points. Yeah, I, I, I'm i guessing week five it's Taylor Heineke. There's a, a look. Sure. Still, maybe still, maybe that's still spicy. Still an up and down situation. Maybe though. that's spicy. Yeah. but That's uh, not spicy at all. Yeah. Um, all right. So, Tyler Ajir, put him on the boat, push him yeah. out to sea, and uh, farewell. <sighs> the New Orleans Saints, we will talk about them momentarily. All right, fantasy headlines for the New Orleans Saints. Kendra Miller, third-round draft pick, running back out of TCU, somebody that we were all big fans of, I think, yes. in the scouting process. Um, Jamal Williams was added this offseason. Alvin Kamara is still there and will be missing a few games to start the year. I think the Alvin Kamara dynasty value discussion is an interesting one overall because Kendra Miller is a very good player. But you've got a lot of mouths to feed in this backfield. You have a new quarterback. Um, what was your reaction here to, like, is this a landing spot you're happy with for Kendra Miller? I love the draft capital for Kendra Miller. He yes. was a guy that I know Mike and I and, and Andy, you just said you did as well, loved the film. It, it took a village to bring him down. He broke tackles. Uh, he had breakaway runs. Really, really, really liked him. He was injured. Late in the process, didn't get to do a lot of the the you know the combine and the the visits. I thought he was going to drop, and so the fact that he went day two in the NFL uh, draft makes me extremely excited. He is probably the biggest riser on my draft rankings. He um, finds himself in a landing spot that is a little crowded right now, but. I would be surprised if Alvin Kamara is on this roster next year. Yeah, that, that's how I see it. He moved up to my, my running back three after the unfortunate Charbonnet incident <laughs> from the Seattle Seahawks uh, because the path is there. for like I'm with Jason that Alvin Kamara, he has been a superstar, but all superstars eventually fade away and they, they move away from the NFL and teams move away from them. 
the the Jamal Williams contract is, is that will, a supernova when where, a star explodes. Uh, when it explodes. When it explodes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, where you are you calling for the I, supernova I season? No, no. That, I, I guess a star dies without a supernova, right? Yeah, it can. It doesn't have to supernova. It okay. Can, it can just. Dim- but you have to have champagne. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where this one's going. Champagne supernova. Oh, oh, that's a an Oasis yeah, reference. Thank you. Whoa. Really good. It okay. Was super good. I think there's better you ways. You gotta to- remember, this guy's 41, Mike. His <laughs> references are gonna be in a different era than. Um, so Kendra, nailed it, Kendra Miller, and the, the the he could get like right out of the gates of the the expected. Upcoming suspension for Kamara. Nothing has happened yet, but we all expect it to happen. It could be Jamal Williams and Kendra Miller, Miller immediately proving that he belongs on an NFL field. And I think sooner than later, he will be the guy for the Saints. It could take a, a full I was year. Say, Kamara, when he gets back, is going to catch a Yeah, yeah of, absolutely. Of but we're talking in th- – there are no running backs other than Gibbs and Bijan look like they are set up to, to start day one. And Kendra, everyone else is a backup. And and for the purposes of, of Dynasty, uh, Kendra Miller's very young. Yes. He is not yet 21 years old. So if he has to be in a crowded backfield for a year and then is in the age that most rookies are drafted next year, that's fantastic. Juwan Johnson, another winner. They didn't replace him at yeah, tight baby. end. They traded Troutman away. Johnson is a sleeper in the tight end category. Oh, for sure. Uh, Buccaneers, they, well, the winner. For the Buccaneers is Rashad White. Yes, it is. Um, they did not add another back during this draft. So if you were during the draft, during post draft, they did. They did they, add Sean Tucker, who did not go. He was not drafted. Had a health concern that yes. clearly led to that. You know, I I think we all looked at Sean Tucker before knowing about the health situation. I loved him in a very similar places. I mean, I had him one spot behind Kend- Kendra Miller in my rankings. Like I wouldn't have been surprised they go around apart. But with the health concern, didn't get drafted. Um, you know, it makes sense for the Buccaneers to take the shot at it if he's healthy. But Rashad White right now, look, I think he's a good player. I said this earlier in the offseason. Not everybody agrees. I just think he's a very good football player. What this team's able to do this year with Baker Mayfield, dot, 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 uh, you know, lots to be determined. But if you get snaps at running back, yep. you're checking off the two biggest, you know, boxes that you can for fantasy. So we'll see if Sean Tucker does anything in camp. Yeah, you you uh you obviously lose Tom Brady, you lose a lot of targets, but you are replacing Leonard Fournette with Sean Tucker undrafted. So uh, Rashad White is certainly a winner. And then other winners here, the Buccaneers could have traded up for a quarterback, they did not. So obviously Kyle Trask superstar. <laughs> Set up for success and I want to uh, it's it's just a quick highlight because he was a round six wide receiver, but Trey Palmer out of Nebraska, he started at LSU, he transferred over, but this past year he was a yards per route run and a targets per route run absolute monster. Uh, he has the athletic profile to be very interesting in the NFL, and he is he's six foot one ninety two, so he's not tiny. So he's just like if you're in you know a four round type of a dynasty uh, rookie draft, then I would take the shot on him late. Absolutely. Moving into the NFC North, the Chicago Bears. Fantasy relevant draft picks here. They invested in offensive line early. Yes. Number 10 overall, the second offensive tackle off the board, trying to keep Justin Fields upright, get those turnovers uh, to, you know, move the opposite direction of where they were. And so, you know, that's big for Fields. Roshan Johnson. Running back, fourth round pick. Uh, this way, this is going to be your compliment to Khalil Herbert. Well, yeah, and you have uh, Deontay Foreman is there as well. So this one is a, this one is going to be a crapshoot here of who is the primary running back because I think Khalil Herbert is very, very good. We have some evidence of when Montgomery was out, Herbert dominated. N- not just for the NFL, he dominated for fantasy football. But Khalil Herbert is. One of these guys, he doesn't have draft capital. I think he was a – Kyle, was he a fifth rounder? Uh, we'll, we'll double, I'll look it up. We'll double check that. So, like, he had very little investment in, in into him. They lost David Montgomery. He looked like a free agency winner. And now he was a winner in the draft because there was no day two pick on a running back. However, Roshan Johnson in the fourth 
Okay, so so Herbert was a sixth rounder, and now you have a fourth rounder, which we know that the hit rate on fourth rounders is already bad. So this this is a it's a bit of a fantasy mess of there is no clear path for for anybody. Like if Roshan yeah. Johnson ends up as the starter by week four, won't surprise me. If Herbert is the guy for the entire season, I get it won't be really surprising. And you have Deontay really, Foreman. I was going to say Deontay yes. Foreman is who I have personally at the top of this list as far as I I believe he will be the most valuable uh, asset. But the the illustration here is perfect. It could be any of them. Yes. It will probably be none of them. And they're all you're the, going to most likely have a three way timeshare. But I do think the best pass catcher might be Roshan Johnson. And they're it, and they're all like similar prototypes too like they're they're bigger guys so it's it's it is an absolute mess here the green bay packers invested heavily on offense in this draft take that um, aaron luke musgrave Ooh. off the board in the second round tight end pass catcher can't believe they didn't take jsn yeah they went oh earlier you mean yeah they, they should have taken him at 13 dummies uh jaden reed Second rounder, wide receiver, Michigan State. Third round, another tight end, Tucker Craft. You can't have too many. And then uh, quarterback in the fifth, wide receiver in the fifth, and uh, late running back. So, you know, heavy investments at wide receiver through the first five rounds could muddy the water for wideouts not named Christian Watson. It, it definitely could. <clears throat> Jaden Reed is very interesting out of Michigan State. Because you have like Christian Watson was big plays. He was touchdowns. It was not volume, and that was big play touchdowns from a Hall of Fame quarterback. Now you move to Jordan Love. Can he do anything similar to that? Uh, probably not. Like Jaden Reed, he doesn't have a, a a tremendous production profile. He's older. He's twenty three, and he's he played uh, you know all four years, so he's not an early declare. So there's there's some red flags against him. But he is a very interesting prospect to me, taken in the second round, just like Christian Watson was. And I, I think it's it's bigger trouble for Romeo Dobbs of that holding on to his fourth-round draft capital of last year, hoping that he turns into everything that the hype machine said he could turn into. I like Jaden Reed here uh, as a like an early second-round rookie pick. What's really nice is if you look at the depth chart at wide receiver, he – is almost guaranteed to be a starter. He's right. It's going to be Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, and Jalen Reed as your primary three wide receivers. There just isn't really an option for other people unless there's a shocker and someone outplays someone. But for the most part, right now, on paper, he's a starter. Yeah, my worry for Dobbs exists in part because of Rodgers departing. You know, he's had his guys that he kind of goes to bat for. It seems like Dobbs was one of those guys that that had his uh, attention. I would have been a little worried about Lazard without Rodgers sure. just because of their connection too. So it'll be interesting. couple tight ends. Al, I'm sure you were thrilled with the two tight ends. I mean, I'm sorry. Did I, I didn't interrupt any tweeting tweeting or anything, did I? No, you're good. Thanks not on for Twitter. Um, we got to get him on like screen time. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Just limit him. Maybe, well, maybe, maybe we like can a, just turn his phone off this is while down, we like record. What would you think of the double tight end stack that you were – uh, I wasn't a fan. No, <laughs> no. We we. I think we're rostering like five or six right now. That's what I you mean, want to do. Is Mercedes Lewis still there? No. Oh, he's not. He's oh, in New York, man. probably. No. Hanging. He's he's not on New York, <laughs> but he's in New York. He's just hanging around. Uh, did you see the video of Alan Lazard and Rogers at the Rangers game? I did not. Well, they're you know fully New York now. The uh, the, the hockey, right? That yes, the hockey, as okay. they say. All right. Did you just, not? You didn't catch any of that. Game seven hockey this week. No, weekend? I was the watching. Hockey is in the Kyle, did you watch that? I don't like hockey that much. You see the Florida Boston game? Yes, that You're, was awesome. Holy crap! I'm heard... wearing a hockey hat right now. This is a documentary of hockey. It's not real hockey. <laughs> yeah, Mighty, Ducks a, hat. Mighty Ducks hat. I mean, I was watching basketball, so no time. I'll tell you this. No time for hockey. I will tell you this. Game seven, Florida Boston, far more entertaining than Game one of the Suns. <laughs> um, I believe it. The Lions. Oh boy. Let's talk about the Lions. Uh, Jameer Gibbs, number 12 overall. They celebrated like uh, th there was no tomorrow. I mean, this was um, – I mean, Dan Campbell got elbowed. Yes. In the chest. <laughs> they were celebrating. So, uh, look, it's a big gamble on Jameer Gibbs, but the draft capital 
They have big plans for him. That, so for fantasy wise, whether you think it, it, it's just like Atlanta, whether you think they made the right decision at running back or not, irrelevant at this point. They drafted a really, really good player that we love on film, and they have a plan for him, or they don't draft him at twelve. One hundred percent. You don't react like that. You don't celebrate like that and spend that draft capital, the number 12 overall pick. There were rock star edge rushers on the board when they picked at six that they bypassed and at 12 great players. They have a plan for Gibbs. That's my takeaway. And that plan has to be catching so many yes. passes. I think he is. You, remember Dan Campbell um, spent a lot of his time with Alvin Kamara and the Saints over there, I think he is wanting to get a pass-catching back who's going to get a ton of targets, open things up in that way. So, as I said earlier, bad landing spot for Bijan, who already was assumed to have first-round draft capital. Jameer Gibbs, bad landing who spot? It would have been... Oh, for the if he had gone If Lions. he had gone to the Lions, but for Jameer Gibbs, who was up until a week or two ago considered a second round pick and then started getting buzz maybe he'll go in the back of the first to be drafted at 12 with a plan for fantasy I do think he's no, going they, to be they, very very good they need a wide receiver I mean that, that's the truth they Jamison Williams is suspended now to begin the year uh DJ Chark is not a part of this offense anymore they Jameer Gibbs is going to fill a lot of the offensive gap to start the year and I think he's good enough to establish himself in that run Mike Sam Laporta tight end yep uh you know Darnell Washington dropped in this draft. There were a lot of tight ends that went ahead of him. Laporta has the ability, I think, to step in and be uh, that replacement for TJ Hawkinson. I mean, he caught 58 passes at Iowa last year, 53 the year before. It's fantastic. You got Brock Wright, Shane Zilstra, James Mitchell. Like the the this is this is his role to have on lockdown here pretty soon. Obviously, he's going to be a rookie, so we know the history with rookie tight ends is not great. He probably won't make a huge impact this year. But going forward, man, is this such a good landing spot for Laporta. And the draft capital, they took him over Michael Mayer. Yep. They also, uh, you know, David, Montgom David Montgomery is definitely in the category of fantasy loser in this deal because yes, there's going is. to be – Lots of downs that he is now giving up to Jameer Gibbs. Ones that he, you know, he's a very capable pass catcher. So if they had gone with a different running back of a different makeup, I probably would have been less or much lower draft capital. I would have been far less concerned about Montgomery. He was a player that I was willing to, you know, I wanted to go take a gamble on in some dynasty leagues. I did not acquire him mercifully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, sometimes things turn up your way. And then got to talk about my guy, Hendon Hooker, quarterback out of Tennessee. He goes in the third round. Of course, you don't love that draft capital, but for for the draft capital, I, I am just infatuated with the landing spot. There's of, a clear path for him. Yeah. It like, and the, I mean, he has, he's coming off of the torn ACL, so he still needs time to recover from that. He needs time to acclimate to the NFL uh, coming out of the offense of Tennessee, the one read scramble type of a system. But the the plan for the Lions, it can change. It can easily change if you know if the season doesn't go their way and they end up with a with a high first round pick next year. But as of right now, like Hendon Hooker taking over as the quarterback for this team, which could be a very potent offense in 2024, uh, I think he is definitely worth stashing at, at the back of a bench. Just like uh, I'm not saying he's Jalen Hurts at all, but Jalen Hurts was a second round pick. Uh, and he went really, really late in rookie drafts because you were like, oh, he's not going to be the starter. Henry Hooker's not going to be the starter, but he could be in just a year from now. I think he will be in just a year from now. If you look at Jared Goff's contract situation, <clears throat> he's making a lot of money, and it continues to balloon and get larger. But the dead cap, like this year, if they wanted to move on from him, we, we were saying when, when the trade happened that they will have Jared Goff as the starter for at least two years because this yes. year, $41 million in dead cap. He's their starter. Next year, drops to $15 million. They can open up a lot of cap space. Well, it really is just going to come down to performance. If the Lions have a really good season, they're not moving on from Jared Goff. If they make the playoffs, win the division, all of that stuff, I don't think they're going to make the preemptive, you know, just let's jettison him our first winning season right. for a long time. But it'll, it'll be telling because they will know 
they all know how Hinn and Hooker has done in practice. He he should be healthy enough to be a big part of they're go, they're going to have their eyes on him. So even if they have a decent season, I think they could make that transition just from a cap situation. Uh the Minnesota Vikings Let's take Madison and add an Addison. Okay, Jordan it's, Addison, it's first beautiful. round pick, it's number beautiful. 23 overall. And this, is he our everyone's wide receiver too? He is mine for rookies. Uh I think so. Yeah. Okay. He, yeah. He 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 was I, my two and there's still despite the run he remains there. I love the landing spot. I don't love the landing spot. I'm fine with the landing spot. I think it guarantees a floor for him that other spots wouldn't have guaranteed. But I still look at this offense that runs through Justin Jefferson that has a talent like TJ Hawkinson that will demand targets that, you know, KJ Osborne had his games last year. I think Addison will be involved, but I'm, I, I do see this being a lower ceiling, higher floor landing spot for Addison where he could have gone. He could have gone someplace like Los Angeles and to the chargers, which they had every opportunity to pick him. Yep. They went with Quentin Johnston. Um, and, I guess I'm less enthusiastic about the ceiling here. I think you you probably have, um, you know, everyone's going to want to compare it to Higgins in in Cincinnati. Yes, I am. Or uh, Devontae Smith in Philadelphia. Yes, I am. <laughs> and both of those situations are, are are more stable, better quarterback situations, um, in my opinion. So I no, I don't think I don't think Addison has the ceiling that maybe some people think. Long term dynasty outlook is a little bit scary because of how much the Minnesota Vikings hate Kirk Cousins and they that that town really wants them to draft the quarterback, move on, figure out a way uh, away from Kirk Cousins because they don't think he can bring them to a Super Bowl. In the meantime, though, Kirk Cousins is very good and certainly good enough to have productive receivers. You have a hundred and seven missing targets from Adam Thielen. I think Jordan Addison goes right into that Thielen role as a first-round pick. Uh, he'll be playing in the slot. I I believe he will have a very good rookie season, and his talent to me says that there is a ceiling if they keep a decent to good quarterback. Uh, do you think that Jordan Addison puts up more fantasy points than T.J. Hawkinson this year? Yes. yes. You both do? Yes. All right. Consider me not in that camp. Uh, the Commanders – or let, let, let's let's stay here for a second. KG Osborne is obviously somebody that uh, takes a hit due to that draft pick. What's going on with Dalvin Cook? The so, uh, the, the the rumors before the they draft, did not invest in a running back. They did not. Well, I mean, they pre invested in before the draft because they gave Alexander Madison the the contract extension. The rumors that I was hearing before the draft were that Dalvin Cook things are things are kind of lined up. But it will not happen until June 1st. June 1st. So the fact that Dalvin Cook, it looks like he made it out of the NFL draft. Like, oh, here we go. Dalvin Cook is still going to be the guy from Minnesota. That is not the case. It, Handicap him staying in, in Minnesota. Uh, I would. I think it's 50-50. I think that it's a majority that he is gone. So I'll go 65% that he's off the Vikings. Yeah, that's pretty much where I am. 60-40 that he is off of the Vikings. They did, they did draft... draft uh, Dwayne McBride, someone that I know Mike likes. Yeah. A lot of people in the dynasty community like he was a, an excellent running back. I believe he only caught five passes in his college career, so he's not a correct. pass catcher. And he played Seventh against round draft pick. He played against weak competition. I wasn't in love with him the way that I know a lot of people were. But yes, seventh round draft pick. Means they also that have Ty Chandler. They weren't. They weren't planning on Dwayne McBride as part of the plan post. Dalvin Cook you don't plan on guys in the seventh round you just grab a guy that you think can make an impact um in the seventh round so um the fact that they almost went the entire draft without grabbing a running back th does make me a little bit less confident that Dalvin Cook is gone but TBD and I have seen the same rumors that there is an AFC team that there's a trade lined up post June 1st the trade will happen let's go real quick through the commanders not a lot to talk about they invested on the defensive side and in, in the trenches, uh, they did draft a six-round running back. It's not consequential. So, Brian Robinson. Which they said they had a third-round grade on. Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he also. You're the only ones because he went in the six. So. And they are comparing him to Christian McCaffrey. Of course they are. That's a joke, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, it Sam, it's a joke right now until it's not a joke. <laughs> Sam Howell. Sam, oh! 
comes away uh, without a more competition at quarterback. So Sam Howell, Brian Robinson, big winners. No significant losers in this draft for the Commanders. The Giants. Speaking of quarterbacks and winners, mm -hmm. um, middling to bad college quarterbacks were huge, huge winners. Thank you, Brock Purdy. <laughs> Every team was <laughs> drafting these. Everyone was trying to get yeah. Brock Purdy in this draft. It was crazy, but the Commanders did not. The Giants. They invested a third-round draft pick in, on Jalen Hyatt. Jalen Hyatt arrives. I think he was the 10th wide receiver off the board. He slipped. And uh, a fifth-round running back in Eric Gray. Look, Jalen Hyatt, they, considering where he went and slipping, this was a, as good of a situation as he could have had. The Giants just needed a slot wide receiver. You know, it was like they, they didn't really have anyone that could fill the role of the slot. I was – preparing all of my statistics you know this is may now which is a nightmare we stat out everybody and when i got to the giants wide receiving core i was actually shocked because it you know it was one that was bad they had a jalen hype but you've got a busy cluster here with wandale robinson coming back isaiah hodgins paris campbell jalen hyatt darius slayton sterling shepherd that are that is six wide receivers that legitimately could make the team and play which is not Great. Yeah, I, I think Hyatt can play outside. Uh, you know, he's an 18.9 per catch guy, a burner. He can go out there and play a Darius Slayton type of role. You know, for fantasy purposes, you're going to need to let the dust settle a little bit on who's part of this rotation. So I, I'm not saying invest a high pick on him. But, you know, when you add Jalen Hyatt in the third, it is a shot to Slayton. It is a shot mm -hmm. to Hodgins. It, it, it doesn't really affect my view of Wandale with his draft capital, but – you know, Paris Campbell, Shepard, hopes that you had for those guys. They already added Waller to this offense that's going to soak up some targets. So, you know, that's kind of how I see the Giants. Yeah, Daniel Jones has been a big winner of this whole offseason yes, process. Adding Jalen Hyatt, uh, Paris Campbell, Darren Waller, having some of these receivers you lost get healthy and come back would be really interesting. The Cowboys. Fantasy winners, Tony Pollard. They didn't invest in a running back until the sixth round when they drafted Deuce Vaughn. Oh, man. <laughs> which what apparently laid you out, Jay. It did, man. It, it laid got me everybody. out. If you haven't seen the videos or you don't know the story, Deuce Vaughn's father, longtime uh, cowboy, works there, was in the draft room. Scout. Scout. He got to literally call his son and ask him if he wants to come to work with him on it's Monday. great video unbelievable did it change your opinion of jerry jones watching that video no not really um no at all <laughs> no. no i don't i don't think jerry jones is a is a robot I mean, he's a he is a human he has emotions he just i don't know that he's a good person i, I think he was really proud of himself human? for yeah. for doing such a good human oh thing. my gosh you just decided to take a shot at him for being good <laughs> Um, but wow, when, when you watch just, you know, basically the, the whole room in there gave daddy Vaughn a standing ovation. It was just awesome to see. It will be cool though. The fact that, you know, this is a kid growing up in and around the Cowboys organization. They're bringing him in. He was so productive. We haven't talked much about him cause he's, he's two feet, three inches tall, weighs 98 pounds. <laughs> Oh, he is a, the smallest running back that has ever existed. Um, he's literally 5'5". Five five. I believe that is the shortest. Jerry Jones weighs more than running, him. Yeah. Um, but, out, but outrageous. Four, outrageous. 1,400 yards on the ground, uh, 468 through the air in 2021. 1,558 rushing yards in 2022, 378 through the air. Like he had his, almost 300 rushing attempts last his, year. His production is outrageous. It's we have seen this uh, before. The Michael P. Ryan, anybody? Uh, these these guys do happen in college. Rarely, rarely ever translates. But it's a great story, and it, it, he'll be interesting to to watch to see if he can get on the field. Well, they in the second round they drafted a new tight end. It was Luke Schoonmaker, who. It, it's rare when you can draft a player that you can both have the crowd go, Luke, and also, shoot. Yeah. Yeah, you might get the double up. Just do first, and then Luke. once. Yeah, they'll just do both. Luke, shoot. So, Michigan, second round. No Dalton Schultz. It was an int Yeah, the, the landing spot is perfection 
for the future. Uh, Dak Prescott loves to throw to the tight end position. Uh, it, if you were holding on hopes for either Ferguson or Hendershot as as just nasty boys off of your waiver wire, goodbye. They yeah they can re- return to which <laughs> they came from. Uh, it was but like Michael Mayer was on the board, right? Am I remembering when that? they were when they had their first pick? Yeah. Yes, when they when, no when they took no I don't Shoemaker didn't go above uh, no didn't? certainly okay. not. All right, I'm misremembering that. No, but they could have drafted, they could have drafted Mayer, Mayer in the first yeah, round. They didn't. Uh, but it, but you you look at what the Bengals did, right? The Bengals went up two spots to hop the Cowboys yes. and and draft Kincaid because they saw the opportunity. Did you just for, say the Bengals? Or I'm sorry, the Bills. Yeah, the Bills uh, traded up. Yes, I did say the Bengals. The Bills traded up two spots to to get ahead of the Cowboys because they thought the Cowboys were going to go Dalton Kincaid because. They have a great opportunity for pass catching tight end. So Shoemaker. It's the second time this happened to Dallas. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, Dallas Goddard yeah. was uh, taken from them, and so they end up with the uh, the bridesmaid here. It's a great landing spot. Whatever third round, fourth round dynasty stash for years down the road. There's really not a lot to talk about for the Eagles. The Eagles uh, invested in uh, the University of Georgia. And um, defense, defense, defense. Yeah, so they they're, oh they're just God. kind of they're going to be so good. Uh, they're set up, and then we talked about the Swift trade already. Uh, so at the beginning of the show, if you're just joining the Philly part here, go back and listen to that breakdown. We talk about Swift and the backfield. One more division in the NFC. My goodness, the NFC West. The Cardinals. Uh, they traded from three to twelve to six. Drafted an offensive tackle. Is good news for Kyler Murray. They needed help on the offensive line. In the third round, a bit of a surprise, they went with Michael Wilson out of Ooh. Stanford. Yeah, he was someone we haven't scouted because he wasn't on the field much. When you look at his tape, he's absolutely excellent. And for this class... He's big. He lo- Yeah, he's, he's actually the prototypical NFL wide receiver. He has just dealt with injuries every single year. That's the knock on him. People in the scouting community loved him as a talent, but just, I mean, crazy injured pretty much every single year. Yeah, and then Clayton Toon, quarterback in the fifth round. They also invested there. Why is that worth mentioning? Well, Kyler, if he's not available, you have a 38 or 39 year old uh, Colt McCoy. Uh, you may Colt's have that old. His, uh, that blew my Colt mind McCoy when Andy is, just said Colt that. No. Maybe he's 37. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, uh, maybe he's 36. Okay. Uh, okay that's, that's he'll be 37 big... when the start the season begins, and he's been hurt, and he's coming off the injury, so. Uh, I there there is going to be an opportunity for somebody to step up in in place of Kyler if he's not starting. There's a legitimate chance that Clayton Tune is the Week One starter for the Arizona Cardinals, and that would be fantastic because there's a what, legitimate. Are you forgetting about the David Blau. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're gonna, they would start. Blau this is not over. worth a discussion. But there's a know. legitimate chance that the Arizona Cardinals could have. They might change their two team. top five picks um, next season. In fact, right now the odds on uh, favorite for the number one pick and the second odds on favorite for the number one pick are both owned by the Arizona Cardinals. So for dynasty purposes, it's very interesting when you look at Kyler's outlook. Caleb Williams, a big name for next year's number one overall pick. Either Kyler does good things this year, they win too many games to have that number one pick, and then they have capital to really support him, and he's a great dynasty asset going forward, or he could be replaced next year. All right, uh, the Rams... The Rams had a an interesting draft to me. I mean, big winner of the draft is is Cam Akers, right? And yeah, Kyron Williams. Some, somehow. Well, and, and Kyron, Mike, you and I liked him last year. Yeah. Didn't get much of an opportunity as a rookie. Cam Akers, his season was one of the most odd, awkward, weird, up, down, all around running back years I've ever witnessed. And so they didn't add another weapon there. They didn't go out and add a extremely high draft capital wide receiver. Now, they didn't have a pick till the um, 36 overall, but... The, the depth chart at wide receiver is... It's bad. It's bad. Um, you've got Van Jefferson. Obviously, Cooper Cup is going to be a, a, a great player. Um, Puka Nakao, the their fifth-round wide receiver He's that they drafted. I liked him, um, and he lands on a depth chart where he can have an impact as a rookie. So it's not a bad landing spot, even though the draft capital wasn't good. And they did grab a running back, a running back that a lot of people had really high 
You know, he was one of the highest recruits coming out of high school to college, such a to TCU. Pick. It really is. Uh, but Zach, Zach Evans it's from such a Ole Miss pick. Yeah. Uh, was drafted. So, he, you know, again, it's another one of those depth charts you land on where you go six-round draft capital, it doesn't matter, it sucks. But he ends up on a team where you could have a one-year uh, impact. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the fact that Cam Akers could go from relevance to off the team, away from the team, it does open a door for Zach Evans, but I'm not sure what they're doing there at wide receiver. They also drafted Stetson Bennett, mm -hmm. who, uh, look, I fourth-round draft pick. Matthew Stafford's been banged up and talked about retirement, so who knows. Uh, the Seahawks yeah, boy. ended up Here we go. with Jackson, Smith, and Jigba at 20 overall. Uh, the Packers and several other teams passed on him, including uh, – you know, teams that we thought might take the shot. And he falls to Seattle. They take the best player available in Jackson Smith and Jigba. And, you know, right out of the gate, you you, you look at the situation, you say, well, they got DK Metcalf and they got Tyler Lockett, so it's not a good situation. I, I don't really look at it that way. I, In my opinion, they have DK Metcalf on a new contract, and then they have an opportunity. You know, we've been kind of made to look stupid predicting the fall of Tyler Lockett, but it will come eventually. And JSN is good enough to kind of, I think, force the issue at some point here. You know, Lockett's going to be 31. Yeah, T Tyler Lockett will play this season at 31 years old. And if you look at what JSN did in college when he was the slot wide receiver next to two great wide receivers in Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson, he, he knows how to play that role. So not only is he going to be on the field in three wide receiver sets and, you know, a part of a really good offense here – his rookie year, but I would imagine that we're nearing the end of Tyler Lockett and he could end up taking over um, a much bigger role going forward. It was a great pick. They had a great draft. They got the number one cornerback, the number one wide receiver, and I freaking hate the Seahawks. <laughs> they're, so, they're, they're so mean, spirited, and stupid dumb, dumb pants because they ruined Mike and I's... <sighs> Beautiful, beautiful Zach Charbonnet. Why would you do that? He's a beautiful man. He's straight up sexy. <laughs> and they ruined it. They ruined it. Yeah, him. not not just for us, Jason. But for, not just Charbonnet. For everyone. Yeah, they oh, yeah. ruined Kenneth Walker, a great running back. And fantasy hearts are sad. I think it's not a bad pick for them in real life. They're going to keep both guys healthy. They're yeah. two excellent running backs. It's a really good NFL draft move, a really good team building move in the second round. Sure, seen it coming. Well, I did. I mean, Pete I, Carroll is addicted. I, I was worried about them at twenty for Bijan because I knew, <laughs> right? I knew that this was a team that w had an opportunity to add a really good running back and ruin things for two parties. Um, it really stinks, and and the the draft value of Zach Charbonnet the fantasy value going forward will be very debated. In my opinion, I think it will end up, by, by the end of the year, being a mostly 50-50 split between the two backs. I don't think it will be Kenneth Walker with 70% of the work and Charbonnet as a rookie backup. Charbonnet is easily the better pass catcher. Yes. He'll be in on those third down rolls, and um, it'll, be, it'll be hard for both of these guys to be excellent if they're healthy, obviously a, either one, if an injury happens to the other, I think will be amazing. I have a rosier perspective on Walker than that take, but it makes perfect sense for this team. Think about, you know, Kenneth Walker began the year hurt. He also missed the game hurt. Rashad Penny, we've gone on that ride. That ride was littered with injury at running back. We've seen way too many snaps from Travis Homer and DJ Dallas over the last couple of years. This team fundamentally cannot have a successful Geno Smith without a running game that is succeeding beside him. So, you know, to me, I still think Kenneth Walker is a much – I still think he's a much better player than Zach Charbonnet. And and I think he's going to have the majority of the work, but it, it is a major blow to his upside. It's a major blow to him being – look, I'm, none of us are going to get in here on my guys or on MV, fancy MVP predictions and put Kenneth Walker's name down because the risk is too high and the path to – a McCaffrey-esque type of workload is not there anymore. Yeah, yeah the, the, say he he drops to like 
I think he's still a low end running back one, but you know, in our early rankings, we had him borderline top five of. Uh, he can still he's a home run hitter. Like he he definitely hits like he'll hit the big play, the big long touchdown. But I think he loses third down work. The question will be, does he lose some goal line work? Because if if that happens, he, the it would be catastrophic. With the addition of Jackson Smith and Jigba as we close out the Seahawks and the receivers they already have. And now a running back room that's so strong. Yeah, is this the draft that Geno Smith should be your late round target? Yeah, yes. Geno Smith was a huge winner for me with JSN and pass catching Charbonnet coming to town. I see him as now maybe that I said there's ten ten quarterbacks that I'm happy with and unhappy with everyone else. Oh, did you go at eleven? Are you at eleven? I, now? I think yeah. I'm at eleven well, now. Welcome, welcome back. That's Geno Truthers over here. We're holding on to last year. I'm, I'm glad to welcome you in. Speaking of truthers, the the anti Charbonnet people victory lapping like, oh, this, well, I told you he wasn't going to be good. It's like the, you don't understand what just happened. The <laughs> NFL said he was awesome. They took him really, really high. He's obviously great, but um, yes, you were right that his fantasy value won't be good as he splits time with Kenneth Walker. All right, let's close it down with uh, the San Francisco 49ers. Um, all right, there you go. No, oh, no, how dare you? Uh, third round kicker, Jake Moody. Yeah, I mean, it, did you hear Shanahan's comments about this? No, no, I did not. They didn't need any starters. Did he? He they oh, needed a kicker. Man, he didn't come in and be like, "Whoops." No, no, they literally <laughs> we, just. That's what he said. Yeah, he he said it, it was a privilege going into the draft where we didn't need any starters except for a kicker. Wow. I mean, they, that's it's the, actually true. It's actually true. And Robbie Gold was a free agent and and kind of. Uh, long in the tooth, as they'd say. So, look, they they drafted a kicker because somebody somebody does sometimes, and, and that's it. You're telling me the 49ers, who half their team will be injured by the time we go into week one, are saying that they're good at depth? Well, they they added a lot on the defensive side, but they didn't have a lot of picks. They didn't have a first or second rounder. Uh, they had three thirds, yeah, two they fifths. Have, they drafted Christian McCaffrey. You know, yeah. two corners, an edge, a linebacker. And, um, you know, picked up Brandon Ayuk's option. So, you know, you want to say fantasy winners, the existing depth chart. I mean, yep. sure, those yeah. players uh, are, are locked and loaded. You look at the NFC Championship game between the 49ers and the Eagles, and you look at how they build their roster. One team says uh, our starters are good. The other always drafts the great guys they don't even need. They got a great cornerback. They they're, they don't have a need there. They, they grab defensive linemen when they've got defensive linemen. They let them train behind excellent people, and then they just keep cycling through. Yeah, but the 49ers knew the reason they lost that game. They've they've solved the problem with third round kicker Jake Moody. Boom boom. He'll probably be my week one boom. boom. Um, <laughs> why don't you give us the breakdown of what's coming in the UDK Plus here as we close this thing out? Sure. So the if you have the UDK Plus, number one, thank you. But uh, like we said at the top of the show, the rookie rankings those are updated. Uh, we're going to be hitting the laboratory here to get the oh boy the the dynasty startup rankings done. Get those out as soon as possible. The teased superflex sleep, Jason. The superflex rankings will be coming out uh, with those dynasty startup rankings as well. We have a mock draft that's uh, already going on right yeah. now with the I fans, love my picks with us and with our writing staff. We have you know riders and fallers. The, the uh, my uh, fantasy hitman draft or trade targets trade away targets that will be updated as well just the the third big drop for the dynasty pass will be happening if, very soon if you got to this point in the show and you're still hungry for fantasy football information please go get the ultimate draft kit it will provide you every opportunity to uh think about it 24 7 yeah. so ultimate draft also subscribe to the fantasy footballers dynasty podcast oh, which will have a new episode out tomorrow that's what they tell me I can't wait. We'll be back with AFC winners and losers on Thursday. For Al, Brooks, Kyle, and the three of us, farewell. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.